Good evening. My name is Arch McIntosh, and uh, I have the honor of serving as uh, headmaster at Charlatan School. I'm in my 17th year there, but I've been uh, head of school for more than 30 years. And if my wife of 30 years, we've been married 30 years, if she were here this evening, she would tell you that I was the poster child for imbalance for two-thirds of our marriage as head of school, which just goes to show you that you can teach old dogs new tricks. And um, what I'm going to share with you this evening, I want to share a few practical things before I sit down, but I will tell you that I learned these along the way, but it took me a number of years to put them in place. And I have to be honest with you that um, I need to tell you how this started for me. It wasn't a pretty picture. I became a head of school um, in Little Rock, Arkansas in 1988. I'd been a head of school uh, for a short time in Georgia. My wife and I had been married for 10 months. And I inherited a school that lost 400 kids in six years. We had 530 students and a budget set for 700, for an enrollment of 700. And it was June, and we were supposed to reach 700 students by August. I felt a little pressure. And uh, I went to work, and I had a wonderful team of people, the folks that were still there, and a wonderful staff. And over the next six years, we uh, grew the school to almost 1,200 students. Uh, I did that by working seven days a week. 12 to 14 hours a day. We had two children born during that time, two little boys uh, that I love very much, but I wasn't there to spend a lot of time with them. Um, on a Friday afternoon, I get a call from my board chair. I said, Arch, I'd love to see you in the office. Well, I was going to an out of town ball game as I did almost every Friday night. I went down to my board chair's uh, office. He was an attorney. And he basically told me, said, listen, we want you to go home and stay at home. And uh, it was the most cryptic message I've ever received. And what took place was a three-month forced sabbatical leave. That's the only, by the way, that's the only sabbatical leave I've ever had. I was put on sabbatical leave by a very caring board that was concerned because I was burning out, literally burning out. In fact, I was, I pulled in several of my colleagues at the request of my board chair to ask them what they thought about my current condition. And virtually all of them said, we could see signs that you were burning out, Arch. We could see signs. The last person I sat down to ask questions was my wife. And I said, honey, do you think I'm possibly burned out? She said, oh, you've been burned out since at least last January. <laughs> that was the honest voice in the room. And so um, I came back from, um, I, let me tell you that I, I, I had someone work with me, a head of school consultant. And I did not know anything about delegation. What happened over the six years was I was still doing traffic duty twice a day. I was do still doing the play-by-play -play for the football games. I was still teaching two classes and all the other things that came with a much larger school. I didn't know how to delegate at all. So I came back to school and began to practice a, new, a whole new skill for me. When I came back, I asked a young man who went on to the Boston Institute of Art to do a picture, to draw a picture, because what I decided to do was I needed to base my life on priorities. So I came up with this. You can't see it where you are, but essentially there are four mountain peaks, four mountain peaks, and each one represents a priority of my life, faith, family, career, and health. And the reality of it is, and there's a little mountain climber, by the way, up halfway up one mountain, because I'm never sure that I'm going to ever achieve my priorities perfectly. But um, I wish I could tell you that I began to immediately to live my life according to those priorities. I did not. It took me years of work. And I will tell you that for two-thirds, as I said, of my career, my career, or of my marriage, my career dominated that. But slowly, surely, I began to work on this. I remember being in the uh, second Klingenstein Heads group up in New York back when we did four weeks and I was the youngest of 10 heads, and I remember uh, talking, we were talking at a break, and I said something, we were talking about vacations, and I sort of proudly said, well, I never take my full vacation. And Dr. Bob Shirley, who's here in the audience, who was a mentor of mine, I remember Bob said to me, he looked, turned to me like this, he said, son, that's just plain stupid. <laughs> Wake up. Bob, the sad news is, well, I, I didn't take your advice to heart immediately, but I will tell you, I've learned since then. And so um, what, uh, what I did was I began to practice how to delegate and how to live my life differently. And what I'd like to do is just 
share with you a few practical things that I've learned that have changed my work-life balance. Number one, who owns your calendar? Your administrative assistant, the students, teachers, parents at your school? Well, I don't know who owned mine, but it wasn't me for a long time. I remember Rob Evans lecturing to us at an NK State Conference in 2002, and he was chastising the school heads because we always talk about not having enough time. And as he pointed out the obvious there, you know, there are only so many minutes in an hour, so many hours in a day, so many days in a week and in a year. And he said, you need to own your own calendar. I used to take the school activity calendar. You've got one of those activity calendars that continues to grow. You know, Rob, uh, Pat Bassett used to say, take something off, put something on. We just put stuff on our calendar at school because we've added programs. And, you know, our school has almost 1,500 kids and we have 69 athletic teams. You can just imagine all the programs but you know what? I used to take that activities calendar, take it to the beach with me, and I would take a yellow pen. I'd highlight everything that I wanted to go do from August through June. And then I'd give it to my assistant to put it in my calendar. And sometime during the school year, I'd think about vacations. You know what I do now? I take that activities calendar, I get a red pen, and I put in all my vacations. I put in when I'm going to get off work. I build in five days to work from home, particularly after particularly busy seasons of the year where I need to be at home and I don't have to get up at 5.30 in the morning. I own my calendar, not the other way around. I used to get a lot of pride in being on lots of boards. I could name all the boards I've been on in my career. At one time, I was serving on seven different boards when I was in Little Rock, Arkansas. I was burning out. Now, I'm, I'm not even in Rotary anymore. After 32 years, my, you know, my perfect membership is over. No more rotary. But you know what? I sleep well at night. I'm happy. And I'm running a good school with less energy spent than I did 15 years ago. I've learned to say no, folks. Some of us are not good at saying no. There's an art to saying no. You know how you do it? You say no. <laughs> it's as hard as that. I've learned to say no, and I don't feel guilty. I used to have lots of guilt. Any of you, I bet none of you have ever had any guilt, right? I used to have a lot of it. Hard time, I didn't take good care of my health. By the way, you're looking at a guy in the last seven and a half years has had six joint surgeries. Two knee replacements, two shoulder uh, repairs, and two hip replacements. 51 months of physical therapy. I tried to work out at 4.30 in the morning right? But then I'd have late nights. How many of you have late nights? Two to four nights a week. I couldn't get up the next morning. I try to work out at the end of the day. I'd be exhausted with my family. My mentor in Little Rock told me something. He said, you need to think about your health as part of your work day, your work schedule. So when I moved to Charlotte, I did something extraordinary. I started swimming at two o'clock in the afternoon, two o'clock during the school day. I go in at seven at two o'clock. I go swimming for an hour. I'm back in the office at 3.30, and I've got the rest of the afternoon for committee meetings and school activities. And I get this burst of energy, and my workout is over. And I, I felt guilty about it. But you know what started happening? Parents used to tell me, would start telling me, boy, my daughter saw you down at the Mac pool, and that's exciting that you're swimming. I'd be in the weight room, and some teenager and I'd start talking. He'd tell his mother that he had a conversation with the headmaster. So I started addressing my health, and now I swim five miles a, a week, five to six times a week. Last, uh, next to the last thing I wanna say is this. Your electronics. Some people laugh at me from the past that I'm actually using my phone for my notes. You all didn't do that, I did. I wanna tell you something. <laughs> Let me tell you something. My electronics do not control my life. How many have put, of us put out of office on our computers, and then we're responding to emails the whole time we're at the conference. We put a voicemail up. You know what? I actually live by what I put on my, on my voicemail and my phone. And what I learned was this, and Steve Robinson, Pat Bassett, and I used to have disagreements about this, because those are the fastest guys respond to emails I've ever seen. But I learned this. People will expect you to respond as fast as you respond. And you know what I've learned? And by the way, I'm good at returning f messages. But do you know how, what percentage of my emails are, are urgent versus important? About 
They're urgent. They're not important. And so I've trained the people in my school to realize I'm not going to respond quite as quickly as I might have otherwise. So if I put out of office, that means I'm out of office until Wednesday morning of this week when I start returning my email messages. Some of you think that can't be done. It can. It actually can. Be strategic in attending activities. You can't come to all the athletic events, but take your calendar and be sure you're selective and pick out certain things, whether it's in the arts or athletics. I have to be visible at my school, but I can't be at everything. Can't possibly be. And lastly, how many of you have an accountability partner? I do. I have a small group of guys that I meet with every other week. And we ask each other tough questions about how we're doing as husbands and fathers, as heads of schools. And they're my accountability partners. And I don't lie to them and they don't lie to me. And they keep me honest about what I'm trying to do in finding a balanced life and meeting the needs of my family, meeting the needs of my school. And you know what I've discovered? Now that I'm not working 60 hours a week and I actually spend time at home, I take I, I take better care of myself physically, and I have a wonderful staff that I can delegate to. And my staff in Charlotte will tell you I'm a really good delegator, wouldn't you say, fellas? Yeah, I'm really good at it. I've learned that art. But I would tell you this, I honestly believe this. I believe I'm a better head of school right now than I was 10 or 15 years ago. Not because I'm working harder, but because I've worked, learned how to work in a way that allows me to take care of my school community while taking care of myself. I encourage all of you to do that, and I thank you for the opportunity of being with you today. Thank you.